Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. We are pleased to be joined by Brittany Force, of course, who drives the Flavor Rack uh, top fuel car for John Force Racing or Flavor Rack Chevrolet, I should say. Uh, Brittany, how are you? Thank you. Great. Thanks for having me. Um, so uh, coming off a big win at Virginia, first time you've been there in a while. And it, it, was, it was a big, uh, I know it was big to have NHRA back in, back in Richmond again, uh, uh, getting the big win, uh, a sweep for JFR. Uh, talk about that big weekend. Uh, it was it was an outstanding weekend for all of John First Racing uh, to be able to return to Richmond, Virginia after you know a couple of years and on such a strong note we doubled up top fuel funny car we landed both our teams in the winner circle um, you know pr- proud of all our teams to be able to do that again we haven't been there in a few years and um, to be able to come back and you know pull that off is it's pretty exciting it's uh, it was a great weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, how crazy is Top Fuel right now with every with you know with all these different teams and how crazy the point standings are? I mean, you have some new teams in there. So I mean, you have DSR, you have Antron's team, you have um, you have now now the Tony you know with Tony Stewart with Leah, of course you. You have the Coletta guys and everybody and everybody else probably getting something like that. But it's really uh, how strong is the Top Fuel class right now? Um, you know, coming into this season, I've been racing since 2013 coming into this season. I've said since the very beginning, this will be the toughest season yet. I believe as a driver, um, there's just been a whole lot of shift, um, in movement in top field. Uh, like you said, or like you mentioned earlier, Tony Stewart, um, came on board and, uh, you know, brought his teams, um, Tony Schumacher came back into any charter drag racing. And then a lot of crew chips have, you know, moved over, teams are swapping and there's just a lot going on. I, I feel like this will be the most competitive season yet. Of course, you know, you're kind of on a, you're kind of on a little bit of a break here. Um, you know, until the first week of June, you're off the next two weeks and it's, uh, and then the, then the season's really going to kick into gear. Cause, yeah. um, of course, uh, it's going to take, you're going to go on the East Coast and then off to the West Coast as well. Um, how excited are you to go back uh, back to the West Coast swing again? Um, I'm excited just to get the season moving. Um, the beginning of our season is always very slow. Um, we have a race, then a couple weeks off. We just came out of Virginia and now we have two weeks off. Uh, luckily, I'll, I'll, I plan to go to the Indy 500 uh, in between, but it, it, it's very slow and it's hard. I like back-to-back races. I, you know, especially coming off a win, you're on such this high and then to have to go home for two weekends, have two weekends off. It's tough. I want to get back out there and, uh, you know, keep that momentum moving forward. We're in a great position. We're currently the points leader right now. And, uh, we just want to keep on going. So, uh, we go to Epi next and do the, you know, the, the Eastern swing, and then we'll be on the West coast. So, excited to do it all yeah i know that um for a lot of teams it's the the west coast swing is probably the most daunting for you i mean yes you do have a shop in indianapolis but you're all based out in california so the east coast swing is going to be is it tough for you guys to you know get adjusted to everything and the time change and all that but you guys have been doing it for so long not really um i think we're just used to it uh it's been our lifestyle for so long it's for me i don't get jet lagged because I usually sleep the entire flight. I'm just trained myself. I, a lot of drivers are that way. I think Austin says that he's the same way. Um, um, don't quote me on it, but, um, you know, before the plane's even in the air, I'm already sleeping. So I'm jet lagged doesn't bother me. I figure it out once we get there. I'm used to, you know, being in and out of airports, in and out of hotels. We live out of a suitcase practically. Um, it's just all I've ever known. So that's no adjustment there. I, there's nothing, um, you know, out of the ordinary there. You mentioned Austin. He's back full time again. And I know that he was, he was with the team and then, you know, some things came up and now he's back. What, what is it like to have Austin full time again? That was uh, talking about, you know, top field being really competitive this year. I forgot to mention Austin Proc back. Uh, he's my teammate, but he is tough competition. And that was another big movement um, in top field, but i um, excited to have him back. Uh, you know, he had a great weekend this last, last weekend in Virginia. 
Um, I, he ran his, you know, career best ET, um, made it, you know, went some rounds on race day and we were hoping for, you know, to end up in that winter circle. Uh, I'm sorry, end up in that final round. We were looking for all J JFR cars, but unfortunately he went out in the semi, so we didn't make it there, but I'm um, really excited to have him back. He's an incredible driver. Uh, love working with him. Talk about what the, what your team is like this year for people that may not know or people that may not follow NHRA that watch a lot of these videos. Who is, talk about like, you know, with your team this year, um, with your crew chief wise, uh, you talked about all the shift and changes in there. I don't think you have, you guys, you guys didn't have any changes if I don't think. No, we're pretty much, um, pretty much the same team. I've been with David Grubnick, Max Savage, and you know, all our guys since we were with it, uh, since we were with Advance back in 2019. So it's pretty much the same group. Uh, we have two new additions uh, this season that have come on. They've been great to the team. Uh, they just gel really well with everybody. But um, it's pretty much the same team I've been with since 2019. David Grubnick's unbelievable. He's incredible to work with. He, he, he's a driver himself. He used to drive one of these top field cars. So um, it's cool to be able to relate to him on that level. And, uh, you know, there's an incredible group. I'm lucky to be surrounded by such a great support system. So going into this, this Eastern swing of the season, you're going to Epping to Norwalk and, and before you head on to the, or you head on to the West coast, uh, also Bristol as well. I forgot that. What, what is this East coast swing going to be like three different tracks? And everyone says that, Oh, it is like, you know, every, every track has its unique thing. I mean, yes, it's the same design, but every track still has its little quirks and stuff. Yeah, no, every track is different. Um, every track is unique in its own. Um, but we, we pull from previous years running down that racetrack. So it's not like we're going into a new racetrack. You know, we've been there countless times before and we pull on, you know, those records before going into qualifying. So um, we had Epping's the next one on the list. Uh, I love Epping, it's a, it's a fun racetrack. You could just tell you're in a different part of the country and uh, the fans are incredible there. So I'm excited to, to get to Epping in a few weeks. Okay, I gotta ask you, um, the fans. Um, obviously, you know, it has been, it, it, has, it has been a while. The fans were always, even during the pandemic, the fans could go into the paddock. Obviously there were restrictions, but now having everything back, what has that been like to interact with them? Because as, as everybody knows, every ticket in NHRA is a pit pass. Yeah, um, it's been great to have the fans back and, and it's, um, it's back to normal how it used to be. Um, it was really tough being out there signing when everybody's wearing masks and it's just, it, it's a different vibe being out there. You know what I mean? You have to stay back and try to sign autographs and get pictures, but you're distancing yourself. So it's nice that we're back to the normal thing, uh, hanging out with the fans, taking pictures. And, uh, you know, that's one of the cool parts about our job are the fans. They can get so close to these teams and these race cars when they're in between rounds and meet the drivers. So it's cool to have that moving again. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and talk about, you know, being a part of, you know, obviously your family has been in this, this business. Your dad is still out there. Um, talk about what has it been like to be a part of doing this for so long you've known this for your entire life what has it been like to do it all this all this time it's normal it's the only thing I've ever known um I grew up in NHRA drag racing I grew up in the sport um you know these racetracks across the country are their second homes for me I, I grew up at these racetracks and and uh, my dad's crew chiefs and his crew guys when I were kids they were bigger brothers to me so really being on a racetrack feels like home um, I just, I love being out there. I, I love, I love being able to work with my team now. And, and, you know, I used to, I fell in love with the sport as a kid in the stands cheering my dad on. And now, you know, I have a whole new respect from it, from the seat. And, um, you know, I've had an incredible journey, uh, you know, all through drag racing and, uh, just it's, it's normal for me. I know it's crazy for other people, but it's, it's just what I've grown up around. Yeah. Um, when we get, uh, let's talk about Epping for a second. What is, what is that track like? What are some of the interesting things people may not know about that place? Hey, uh, let's see, Epping, New Hampshire. Um, like 
Well, what are you asking? Pinpointing what? What are we looking for? Just unique things about the racetrack that maybe, because I remember, remember every track is unique and different. Like, uh, like it's designed the same, but it is also every track is is different in, you know, has their own little quirks and stuff. Uh, I'd have to go into my notes and, and talk with Lanny, our track guide, and really see, uh, you know, what uh, stands out on this racetrack. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but uh, Lanny has the tracks, every track laid out. He has maps that he's built that we take from track to track. So we usually study those before we go into the weekend. Yeah, for sure. And of course, um, the other, you know, other unique track out there, of course, you're, when you go to the West Coast Swing, when you go to Colorado, is that, is that a place where like anything can happen? Because it seems like interesting things happen there. You know, it's, it's a whole different ball game out there. It's, um, we, unfortunately, we've always struggled there. We've never seemed to figure out being on top of the mountain, but you have to adjust, you know, these cars going in there because you're in a whole different atmosphere. So it definitely is tough. Um, we're looking for some better luck this season. Um, again, we've just, we've always seemed to struggle there for some reason. All right. Well, Brittany Force, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us and uh, good luck at Epping. This, thank uh, you this so much. Thanks for having us. All right.